Good morning. So good to see you this morning. Drew and Amanda are out of town, and actually, I think on their way back home today from an anniversary trip. So we're glad they've had a good time. Look forward to seeing them back. We're glad to see you today. If you're visiting with us, we're always honored to have guests here at Mount Olive Baptist Church. You are welcome here, and we're glad to see you. And we hope you enjoy this time of worship and just join right along with us as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here we are the Sunday before Christmas. Seems like it's got come upon us quickly, but uh, we just uh, look forward to just time together in God's house to worship Him and honor Him. That's what Christmas is about. It's about worshiping our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and honoring Him. Let me give you a few announcements. And then, of course, we're going to have our choir uh, lead us in worship today. And we're so looking forward to Song of Joy and all the hard work that Brother Anthony and the choirs put in in leading us in worship. So I don't want you to think about this as a performance today because that's not what it is. It's a time of worship. We'll hear the gospel through song. And today we'll worship our Lord Jesus with joy in our heart for who he is and for what he's done for us. So our choir wants you to know that they're worship leaders today and worshiping right along with us. So let me remind you of our schedule. No p.m. service tonight, so no night service. When we finish this morning, we'll be done here for the day. I hope you get a chance to spend time with family. We will have a Christmas Eve service. That will be Tuesday, uh, beginning at 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. And we'll go about 30 minutes. We try to keep it to that 30 minutes because we know that there are family gatherings that happen. And maybe you want to slip out from that and uh, come to the service and then be able to go back. So we invite you to bring your family, friends with you to come. It'll be a Lord's Supper service with uh, scripture reading, uh, songs, and the Lord's Supper. So we would, uh, we would love for you to come if you can. And then no Wednesday service, of course, on the 25th. We hope that you have a great Christmas day as you uh, worship our Lord and spend time with family. Don't forget our Lottie Moon Christmas offering. We've got two more Sundays, this Sunday and next, to collect that. Our goal is $5,000, and I think we have somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000 now. So we're some short of our goal. So pray about that if you've not given yet. Uh, this is very important for our international missionaries. No, no bed ministry this week, um, and we'll let you know next week about the following week. Um, some things that are coming up, Brotherhood and WMU will be Sunday morning, January the 5th. Uh, deacons meeting Sunday night, January the 5th, and then business meeting on January the 8th. Uh, we appreciate all those who donated socks to the Baptist Children's Village. We got 251 pair, and Miss Ernestine got those delivered. So thank you for that. And then we had some gifts given. You'll notice in your bulletin. We appreciate the gift uh, from Mr. and Ms. Eddie Kilo given uh, to the bed ministry in honor of Karen Reeves and family. And then um, Mr. and Mrs. Sam uh, Guglietta given in honor of Joyce Kimbrough and family. We appreciate those. And also, Miss Helen had nine sets of bedding given uh, by her family yesterday to the bed ministry. And I uh, appreciate that. And I don't say often enough how thankful I am to you because almost every week somebody brings bedding for the bed ministry. And I appreciate it, every gift so very much. Um, it, by way of um, prayer requests, let me mention these names. Uh, Betty Camp. Karen Roberts, Brother Brian Wilson, uh, Brenda James' sister, Velma Prather, uh, and then Robbie and Caitlin Kimbrew are both sick and lots of flu and lots of uh, that kind of thing going around right now. So we want to remember those in prayer. All right, if you wouldn't mind standing with me this morning, we're going to have our um, scripture reading. And I'm going to begin um, reading this morning in Isaiah chapter 9, verse number 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment, and with justice, from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And then I also want to read um, in Isaiah uh, chapter 53. 
and we will, we'll read verse number 1. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and we, when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate his coming to this earth some 2,000 years ago, living as a man, yet still fully God, performing for us what we could not do for ourselves, living that perfect sinless life and dying upon the cross as the satisfaction for your wrath upon our sin. We love you, Father. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you for his birth. We thank you for his sacrifice on the cross. We thank you for the resurrection. And we thank you, Lord, that he is coming again to take his church home. So, Father, help us to serve you and honor you each and every day, to be good stewards as you have called us to be. Help us to live our lives, Father, as Christians, depending upon the Holy Spirit and trusting you to strengthen and guide us and help us. Father, today as we worship you, may this worship be pleasing in your sight. We pray that the songs that are sung will be a sweet sound in your ear today, Father. That you'll bless this choir as they sing, Father, praises unto your name. And Lord, as we unite our hearts together in worship and praise unto you, Father, strengthen us. Help us to love you more and to love others more each and every day. Father, I pray for those here today who are lost, that they'll come to know Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior. I pray for Christians that are hurting today. Lord, those that are sad uh, because of the loss of a loved one, those that are hurting because of sickness or trouble, Father, you are the God of all strength and comfort, and you help us, Father. You are refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And so, Father, we do trust you. We do thank you. We do praise you. We do honor you, Lord. And we worship you here today. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have a time of meet and greet. I'd like for you to do that. Afterwards, we'll, have our, um, we'll also have our offering, and then the choir will lead us in worship. Well, I guess Chester wants to say something, so I'll, I'll give him the floor, all right? Uh, this time of the year, we uh, do like to uh, show our appreciation for our staff, both the paid staff and the unpaid staff. So I heard her say, come on, girls. Monty, Mona. Last week, uh, we gave Drew his gift, and uh, he went off and to the islands and is on his way back. So... Uh, I'm sure he enjoyed his part of it, so I hope these people will too. So have a small uh, thank you from the church for your hard work and dedication. We appreciate you very much. All right, let's have our beat and greet.
Okay, at this time, if our ushers will come forward, we're going to take up our offering. All right, we're going to pray. Amen. Oh! 
water poured out on a vast, dry desert lake. This is how he came. It was a moment in the gospel story where a merciful God stretched forth his hand in an indescribable act of loving kindness, tender in mind, yet sovereign and omnipotent, almighty in his power to so simply, yet so majestically illuminate the darkness with his everlasting light. And just as it happened that first Christmas, somewhere in this very moment, someone perhaps in this very place is hurting and in need, crying out for a Savior. Heaven hears your cries. Heaven sees your tears. Heaven knows your pain. Hope has come. Once again, the Father stretches forth His loving hand, reaching out to find you here in your very own silent night.
Christmas is a time for invitations. We receive them in all sorts of ways, through the mail, via text and social media, by phone, face to face. Invitations to come celebrate the season with those we love are everywhere around us. Invitations have always been a part of the Christmas story. The angels appearing to the shepherds, inviting them to come to Bethlehem to see the newborn king. A cosmic invitation appearing in the heavens as a bright star inviting the wise men to come and seek the Christ child. We hear it in the songs we sing. Come to Bethlehem and see him. Come, all ye faithful. Come and behold him. Come, let us adore him. Here tonight, he extends an invitation to us to go beyond the imagery of the babe lying in a manger, inviting you to come to him here and now, just as you are. Jesus is waiting for you to respond to his invitation to know him in the fullness of his grace and acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. Invite him to come into your heart to rule and reign as Lord of your life. Come now, worship the King. Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow.
more than to our wise God, the only King forever. We raise grateful songs of praise.
about how the Lord has spoken this morning <coughs> through this time of worship. I want you to think about His coming to this earth some 2,000 years ago. That little baby changed the course of history, changed the course of the world. And it's what God had planned even before the world began, before He created anything or any one of us, He already knew that He Himself would be the Redeemer of mankind. That we could place our faith and trust in the Savior who would come and forgive us of our sins by His death on the cross. Through the power of the resurrection, we could have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. He said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. You can know rest today if you know Jesus. Paul said that we are justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The faith in Jesus Christ, by God's grace, declares us to be holy and righteous before God. He accepts us on behalf of what Jesus has done for us. And our part, simply to believe, to have faith, to trust. And that changes the course of your life when you do. Gives you a whole different mindset, a different purpose in life the purpose of honoring and glorifying our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what He wants. That's what this choir sang about this morning. So we have, as we have this time of response right there in your seat, think about how the Lord wants you to respond to Him this morning. If you're lost, simply trust and believe. Turn from your old way of life and believe in Jesus. Trust Him in your heart. Step out from your seat and come forward and make that public. Let us rejoice with you. We've heard songs of joy this morning and there's no greater joy than knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Even the angels in heaven rejoice over a sinner that 
comes to Jesus in repentance and faith. If you need to step out and come forward, just do that. If you're sitting in the middle, that's okay. Someone will let you out. Maybe you want to come and kneel here at the altar. If you're a child of God, you just feel that song of joy bursting out in your heart today and you want to come and kneel here and praise God and thank Him. If God's put it on your heart to become a member of this church, be a part of this family of faith, we'd love to have you. And I ask you to step out right now. Come on down and let us rejoice with you in the decision to be a part of this family of faith. There might be other decisions on your heart you need to make. We're just all in this together. We're all praying for one another. We all want God's will to be done. So with heads bowed, eyes closed, and as we're praying all over this sanctuary, this is your invitation from God to trust Him, to follow Him, to obey Him, to love Him, to honor Him. If I can pray with you, I'll be glad to do that. To help you from God's Word, I can do that this morning. But look to Jesus. He's the author and finisher of our faith. Trust Him right now. some decision in your heart that you need to make. Would you rise to your feet? And Brother Anthony, would you lead us in singing that first stanza of Silent Night? said as you probably have as well we have a big task before us we should work like it depends on us but trust like it depends on God and this morning the choir has worked as if it depends on them but they have prayed and trusted because they know it does depend on God so let's give God a, a hand of applause for their hard work and for what Brother Anthony has done to put into this time of worship this morning as well. To honor our Savior these few days before we celebrate his birth. So thank you, choir, and thank you, Brother Anthony, so very much. And of course, I always appreciate our accompaniments so, so much as well, Mona and Monty and, and Miss Charlotte and what they do. And of course, our sound folks who have to be here as well to, to do something like this. So I'm grateful to each one. Uh, I want to remind you of one announcement I left out. So next Sunday is a fifth Sunday night, okay?
fifth Sunday night. So we're going to do our regular fifth Sunday night singing, and then we'll have a finger food fellowship afterwards. So next Sunday afternoon, we'll meet at 5 o'clock for our singing, and then we'll have just, if you'll bring some type of finger food, we'll have a little Christmas after Christmas fellowship together. That'll be next Sunday night. Um, and I hope to see you Tuesday night if you can make it for our Christmas Eve service. I don't want anyone to feel guilty if you can't come. If uh, you have a, a family get-together schedule and you can't make it, that's fine. Just pray for us, and if you can come, please do. All right, I love you all so very much. Pray that God will bless you uh, this Christmas season and into the new year. And I look forward to seeing you if you can make it on Tuesday night. Let's bow together. And we'll have a closing prayer. Rondi, would you mind leading us in this prayer, please?